So, <clears throat> this is Hrushevskoha Street. I was curious to see what it looked like now that all the attention is on Kiev. You can see the street is working again. And you can see parts of the barricade are still here. Though they're not as big as they were. I think a lot of it was made of snow and ice when I was here last. And they, uh, a lot of these bricks from the sidewalk are stacked up and there's little little displays of flowers and candles and some of the pictures of the fallen. Oh, and they're fixing the Dinamo Stadium entranceway. So I think this was like the second barricade right here, and the third one, or it was either the second or third, and this was the either the third or the fourth right there. There's a motorcycle helmet, a shield, plywood shield. It used to be they'd only let you this far if you had a helmet on your head. Now, of course, the protesters have won, at least in Kiev. So. The barricades come to an end, right here, there's some guards. And that is Hrushevskoha Street. I'm not sure when these were installed, but now I'm back at the beginning of Rushevskova Street near the intersection of Rushevskova and Khrushchev, beginning of Khrushchev Street. And it looks like these metal things there to stop armored vehicles. At least that's what it looks like in the World War II films when they're all on the beach. So as you can see, the barricades are still here. These right here are the biggest that I've seen left. And they're smaller since all the snow and ice has melted. It's a beautiful spring day. You see where they pulled up the rocks to uh, throw at the police. All kinds of artwork hanging. Culture seems to be on the side of the protesters. I don't know if anyone's seen the videos of the pro-Russian protests, but... They're savage. Reporters get harassed. It's nothing like you have here and you had here on Maidan. Here there are guards, there's people keep discipline, they forbade alcohol. Very different nature from those uh, Russian hooligan protests that have been popping up in Donetsk and Crimea. At least from what I've seen on tele on YouTube, raw footage. So this is the Union building that got burnt down. It seems like they dabbed it with big, big balls of uh, pink paint. They kind of gave it polka dots. Looks kind of cool. It doesn't look so tragic anymore. 
Alright, now we're coming up on these other barricades. A woman selling a bunch of candles and flowers, flags. And we're coming up on the main stage on the other side of these barricades. Those guys look like guards. So all the tents and everything are still here. Oh, I should go up that way later. <laughs> so this sort of iconic piece of architecture was a frame for the Christmas tree that was going to go up. And uh, the Christmas tree never went up because the protest got crazy and people just put flags all over that frame. Putin, your brain is destroyed by Botox. That's not so funny. Donetsk tent. It's a beautiful Sunday morning and Saturday morning in, in Kiev. So I think a lot of people were killed up that way. I think that's where that famous footage is of the guys advancing with shields and then getting mowed down by uh, AK-47s. <clears throat> and here, of course, is the main stage. Some more flowers. Everywhere flowers. Not sure what they're building. Flowers. So many flowers. I think with all these flowers and candles you see how grateful and proud people are of what happened here. Crimea of course is a huge distraction to that. But you can feel it again when you're here. I kind of had forgotten. People think, think about what happens. So many flowers. Alright, now let's turn and look back at the stage right there.